No. No buzz. At Just Bees Book Club. Homesick Stories by Nino Cipri. Um, yeah, I've been a, I guess a, I've been a, an admirer of, uh, of Nino's work for a few years now. Um, I had the, oh gosh, this feels like a lifetime ago, but uh, we're still in the same pandemic. That's, that's wild. Um, in 2020, I had the privilege of being able to host a, uh, a sort of uh, pod within the pod, I guess, uh, a, uh, a series uh, over on the Spectology Book Club podcast. Uh, we were calling it Quarantine Digital Book Tour. Um, it was, you know, it's, the idea started basically March 20th, uh, 2020, something like that. Um, or specifically what happened was Adrian, who ran um, uh, Spectology along with um, his co-host Matt, uh, were call, put out a call and be like, hey, does anyone want to edit um some stuff for a podcast that I had, had have an idea for. And I was like, I do that. I've done that. I can do that. Uh, and then Adrian was like, actually, you're like personable and, and smart and, and read things. You want to do this idea? And I was like, what's the idea? And we chatted about it. And um, Adrian mentioned that like, uh, Spectology had enough of a listenership that um, it looked good to people potentially um, as a sort of, uh, replacement for book tours um, for people who are releasing books at the at the beginning of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and I was like, let's go. Uh, and somehow the first person I interviewed was Veronica Roth, which was wild. Um, she was very nice. Um, <laughs> talked briefly about, uh, you know, she who must not, not be named or whatever. It was, it was kind of fascinating early. Uh, early critic, uh, which is nice uh, of her to be. Um, that's not the point, though. I My second or third interview uh, was for this book that I had only heard of through Spectology, actually, because um, I was a listener also, and I had been a guest a couple times before that, but um, I think it was Adrian mentioned on one of the uh, sort of like book roundup episodes, maybe like, like the end of year episode for 2019, that uh, there was a book called Finna by Nino Cipri that was coming out that they were very excited for. Um, and I was like, oh, I should look into that. And I looked into it, I was like, oh, that sounds really fun. Um, Finna, for those who don't know, I'll probably be rereading it at some point in the not too far future, uh, is about some burnout queers who work at, uh, in all but name, uh, Ikea. Uh, and there's a wormhole that opens up and a customer gets lost and they have to sort of find it. It's about being friends with your ex. It's about feelings. It's about funny shit happening. Um, it's a delightful book. Nina was a wonderful person to chat with. Um, and since then, they have released Defect, the sort of sequel to, to Finna. Um, and then before that, they had written Homesick Stories. Uh, this came out in 2019. Um, it's just a collection of stories that they wrote, it looks like, from like 2012 to 2019, basically, if I'm looking at that right. Uh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of mid 2010s energy in this book, if I'm being completely honest. Um, and if I'm being completely honest, um, I think they are a very solid short story writer. Um, they kind of get in and get out. There's an idea, there's some narration, it's et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think they really, really shine in the novelette, novella sort of like word count area from what I've read of them, including this book, um, because they. They hit all the beats, right? They can be sort of, they can write rather um, like sentiment without sentimentality. They can write, uh, they can get in, get out. They can sort of linger in spaces, like all really good stuff in many ways. Not, not mind blowing um, for me at least. Um, the things that they do when that like, so Finna and, and, and Defect were both novell novellas. Um, and there's a couple of novellas that sort of end this, uh, I, I think they're both, it's, Presque Vue is, uh, like 20, 20 something pages. That's so probably still in short story range. And then, uh, Before We Disperse, like Star Stuff goes from 125 to 197, so like 70 pages. 
so maybe just shy of a novella but like um i feel like when they can stretch their legs a little bit but yeah, when they stretch their legs a little bit in a story form, or when they find a story that allows for that sort of length, um, that's when that's when they I feel like they they're running on all cylinders. Um, and I'm very curious. I don't know if they have a novel planned at this point, um, but if they do, I'm, I'm gonna be all over it because number one, I love their writing. Uh, number two, I think they're very funny and also uh, tell trans stories very well. And number three, um, they were really nice to me that one time I got to talk. To <laughs> the third one is. Uh, far and away the least important fact um but yeah uh i don't feel like i have a ton to say beyond that like i mean like which super little dead girl tm are you is like the second story in this it's uh it's like a buzzfeed quiz style thing so when i say big 20 mid 2010s energy um there are literal stories that are like uh you know it's a pillorying uh internet culture of the time um, the other the other main story I think um, is Dead Air. Uh, it's the third story in here. Uh, it's, uh, it's told. It's, it's got a sort of gimmick set up, right? It's uh, told through voice memos, basically, um, or voice recorders. Um, that the sort of main character is I think Nita. Um, and she meets a person named Maddie, uh, and has this project where. I think Nita was she, her. Um, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, Nita has an art project slash sociology project slash um, delusions about how people interact in the world. Um, that's a joke. Um, where she is uh, doing uh, interviews with anyone she sleeps with. And then she kind of falls for this person, Maddie, who she's uh, sleeping with, uh, or like who, who starts off this like interview thing. Uh, and then you sort of get this sense that something's weird about where Maddie's from. And then it turns on going back and there's like a, history a traumatic history with a car accident and it turns on going to uh to maddie's hometown and meeting meeting maddie's mom and um and sort of secrets are revealed uh, and that one's that one's a real solid short story um what was what was that published uh dead air first appeared in night first appeared in nightmare magazine issue 71 august of 2018 i think that was pretty delightful um i mean the other two that i like feel like again all pretty good all good even short stories here not just not mind-blowing um and it, except for maybe the last one um presque vu is the second to last story i guess that was in liminal stories in 2017 i don't know if liminal story still exists um but that one uh... oh that one yes that one is, is pretty delightful it's uh it's set in a world where people are haunted um, and everyone has their own sort of individual haunting. Um, the main character uh, uh, has keys stuck in their throat every morning. Um, uh, other people sort of come around. They have different uh, things. Somebody gets phone calls all the time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a, a, good little, a good little built world in there, um, which I think is a, is a thing that Zippery's also very good at. Um, and then the final story is Before We Disperse Like Star Stuff that is uh, sort of framed as a documentary about these three researchers who discovered um, the uh, <laughs> bones of a pre-human intelligent species that looks like otters, kind of. Um, they, they know they're intelligent because they have a writing system that was discovered. Um, one of the researchers who's sort of the focal character at the beginning, Damien, is, uh, has sort of cashed in on this, written a book about it without the other two. The other two have their own issues with Damien, and, uh, but Damien gets, uh, it goes to option the movie rights for the book and gets approached by the Smithsonian who want to make, a sort of history channel style documentary about it. Like a lot, a lot of facts, but also a lot of speculation. And it's like, 
uh, it, it is it is exactly what I described, right? Is uh, you know finding a story that has the legs to stretch, um, and 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 I just had a it, I think that one was that was the uh, that was when I was like, yeah, I should reread Fina, Fina sometime. <laughs> Um, I read that book. I like Nino Sipri's writing a lot. You do too, if you're a bee, I think. Is that how that works? I don't know. Thanks for not watching.